going deeper with Jason George into northern Canada, the great Canadian cat hunt of 2023, bonus episode A. The first animal that we happened to find on this trip was the North American bald eagle, one of the most beautiful birds that soar the skies above us. Let's see how many kilometers this episode takes. In 2022, I had this goal of seeing a Canadian cat, and I didn't put much effort in. So in 2023, I made a decision that I was going to go in search of it. So I brought bones with me, and we brought some gas. Unfortunately, I didn't bring enough gas, because I almost ran out of gas on this epic adventure. I went in chase of the Canadian cat. A beautiful thing. It could have been a cougar, a lynx, or a bobcat. It didn't matter to me. I just wanted to see one. I was also hoping to see this cross fox, and meet up with this lady named Hazel. I ran into a wolf pack, I even saw a unicorn. I saw so many things on this adventure. It was awesome. Come join Bones and I as we adventure into Northern Ontario. My first stop on the way ended up being amazing because it was full of bald eagles and they were fairly active. It wasn't just one or two of them. There were actually 25 of them that I was able to count. Yeah. 25 plus bald eagles. A bald eagle will not get its distinctive coloring until it's about five years old. So these other big birds that you're seeing with the bald eagle are juvenile bald eagles. Have you ever seen a bald eagle? Leave your experience in the comments. Have you ever seen one poop? Well, now you have. The trip to Thunder Bay is a long one, so I stopped in and visited with an old friend I hadn't seen since university days, and he helped me with my comedy. At the same time, my first girlfriend was a lesbian, <laughs> and uh, her is now a lesbian. No, she's now a lesbian. <laughs> I found another spot that had bald eagles. These ones were super vocal. Let's listen. They sound so different. I wonder what each sound is saying. I'm actually shocked that I only saw one dead deer on the way there and one dead moose on the way back. This water formation is actually really cool and I had to stop. I wanted to get closer, but I wasn't exactly sure where the shore was, and I didn't want to get wet. I decided to take the coastal route there, and it was absolutely stunning, and on the way back I took the other route, which was also beautiful on a totally different level. Part of my goals for 2023 was to see more of Canada, and that's what this journey is all about. Even if I don't get to see that cat, which I really hope I do. I'm just going to enjoy getting to see more of Canada and see parts I've never seen before. On my drive to, I don't even know where I'm going, I end up spotting this lone deer and I park my car and then I watch it for a bit. And I got this phone call from the school that I'm supposed to be doing a presentation for and the class yells to me hi and then the deer ran and once it calmed down, I actually sent them a better picture of the deer and me. That presentation in front of those 60 students that had just purchased the Canada book and read about it, and then they got to sort of join in on a hunt with me, that presentation was so much fun. And then at the end of it, they asked me to sign their shoes. Wow, that's a first for me. On my way to this location that I had been told about, I spotted a bald eagle nest and at the other location there were a whole bunch of male deer some of them had dropped their antlers some of them had big racks this other one had an odd antler I was not able to actually find any antlers on this trip but I did get to find a unicorn but we'll come to that one in a second 
So the cool thing about deer is they like to follow the same path. It's sort of like the easiest route they can take. That's why that one was walking down the human pathway. It's smarter and it conserves energy. If you notice, all of these deer are actually walking in the same path. Yeah, we're talking about you. It's okay. You can keep going. The unicorn. My favorite deer. Or the one-antlered deer. Kids often get upset when I tell them that I've found a unicorn or that I'm about to show them a unicorn. But this is as close as you can get to seeing a unicorn in real life. Have you ever seen a unicorn? I've seen a few of them in my day, and every time I see them, it always makes me smile. One day I'd love to see a moose unicorn. That would be cool. Unfortunately at this spot, a lot of people actually feed them from their car, which that means that the deer get used to cars, and then they get hit by the car. And then unfortunately they fall prey to other animals, and they become dinner for so many. I wish that the people would, at least if they're going to feed them, get out of the car. It's like Pavlov's theory. The bell? Yeah, that bell is the car. I had connected with this photographer on Facebook who's amazing. And she took me on this hike and as we get there, all of a sudden, she's like Pocahontas or Cinderella. And all of the deer just show up and come out of nowhere. It was absolutely amazing watching all of these birds and deer just come out and hang out with us. They were a little shy and nervous. I think it's only because I was there. But, wow, they all were so beautiful. She had names for all of them. I don't remember all of them. But there was like River and Ivy. It was honestly a magical experience, and I'm so glad that she shared it with me. Hazel was telling me that she hasn't seen her fox recently, but she says that if she walks this one route, sometimes he shows up. And just as she's explaining this story, all of a sudden, out of the corner of my eye, I notice someone. Hi, Twilight. This might be my second favorite fox I've ever seen. This is a cross fox. It is a red fox, but it's actually a cross fox morph. So this one has more black in it, right? If you remember my melanistic fox, this one is more black than a normal red fox, but not as black as the melanistic fox. But this one is absolutely beautiful. And just as I think our experience is done and it vanished, showed up in the distance and... well this is pretty cool now i'm getting to see the cross fox and it's sort of hunting it's amazing to watch how the pattern of the fox is so sporadic and it just sort of goes anywhere and it's sort of like running at us and it's like nope i'm gonna go this way and then i'm gonna go that way that's how you can sort of tell if you're following a fox print or a fox path. It's very all over the place. It's also normally a solo pathway. If it was a wolf, it would be a pack for the most part. Hey, Twilight. There we go. This is actually amazing. She hasn't seen this fox in weeks and it shows up and this is the experience that I'm getting. This is amazing getting to spend this much time with a fox. Normally they're in and out and gone. This one was hanging out and got some food. I wonder what it's eating. Do you have any ideas? What about those colors? The colors on this fox are absolutely amazing. The black and the white, oh, this is an absolutely beautiful fox. And after an amazing first day in Thunder Bay, I decided to stop and get a drink and compare the animals. 
I don't know if we have a beaver duck down south, but hey, who knows? Well, the next day I woke up and I found this creepy guy walking in the forest. And then I noticed something crossing the road. And then it jumped over the fence. Unfortunately, I was not able to get a picture of this creature. It was absolutely beautiful. I can tell by the way that it was walking that it was not a dog, but it was a cat. It was a very large Canadian cat. It actually had paused on one side of the road before I got there, and then it crossed the road, and I missed it. And here you can see its pounce mark over the fence, and all I could see was it walking into the distance. Man, I wish I got to see it. But I do have some pretty cool photos of the tracks. They're pretty clear. If you could confirm what kind of Canadian cat that is, what would you say it is? The parks are beautiful here in Thunder Bay. Some of the landscapes are absolutely shocking. Seeing how dense, to how sparse and dead the forests can be. While other ones are dedicated to some amazingly famous and important people. You can see bones here with, yeah, that's right, Terry Fox. And the view from up here is absolutely stunning. The journey home began with some fog and maybe that was a sign for the craziness that was about to happen with me almost running out of gas twice. The first time I wasn't so worried about because I had a tank of gas, but we'll get to that in a second. Here's this grouse high up in a tree, and I don't normally see them high up in a tree. Have you ever seen one high up in a tree? Have you ever seen a grouse? And they can change sizes pretty quickly. And here's that moose on the side of the road. This moose has definitely been here for a bit. I wanted to come back and view it at nighttime, but it was way too far from where I was staying. And then I found these tracks on one of the roads I went down. Yep, this is a wolf pack track, and I followed it for a while. I walked it, I drove it, it was amazing. But I never did find that wolf pack. I wish I would have seen it. I've only ever seen that one wolf in Algonquin. Do you see how there's a path and they all sort of come back and you'll see some of them will zig out, but they eventually come back in? Well, along the pathway, when I lost the wolves, I found these moose tracks and they were like dancing, it looks like. I wonder if it was trying to protect themselves from the wolves on the outside. Who knows? I wish I would have seen what or how the moose caused all of these awesome tracks. It looks like it was dancing to me. At least that's what I'm thinking. What about you? It looks like they're having a great time. Look at how far they go. So I follow these tracks and then that's when everything goes weird. All of a sudden the tracks stop and I'm like, ooh, and I decide to turn around. And on my way back, I actually, my light goes on, but I'm not worried about it because I've got this tank of gas with me. And I'm noticing all of these roads and they're going to like subdivisions. It's crazy to me. It looks like they're setting up this huge town, way bigger than anything I've seen in Toronto. Hmm, I wonder what's going on up here. Do you know? And I had used my tank of backup gas and then I was following my GPS the next day and for whatever reason it took me down this road and I got this odd feeling so I turned around and my light ends up going on and I would have had no reception but for whatever reason I turned around at that point and I was able to get to a gas station after having my light on for 74 kilometers I was never so excited to see this place and I got some food and gas, and that was it. That story could have ended a whole lot worse. I wish I would have seen a white moose too, but I'm glad I'm safe and sound. Whew.
<clears throat> Still don't have a picture of a Canadian cat, but I have a great experience and I wish I had filled it back up. Unfortunately, I didn't. I'm glad I trusted my gut and honestly, here's to more adventures and having fun. Until next time, stay safe, have fun, and keep enjoying wildlife. Please like, share, subscribe, 